What's up guys? Today we're gonna take a look at the Mori brush editor and we start right now. Okay, let's take a look at brushes now in Mori. So to access brushes, we have a few options. So first off over here, this palette here, this icon. And if we have tooltip enabled, we can see what options we have to to um, add it, the properties of a brush. So for my example, let's see the R that will, um, and we slide from side to side. It will uh, be the radius of the brush. And if you have a brush that has some kind of uh, directionality, let's take something that more obvious. Maybe old shippy. And if I hit, hit the W, you get a sense of like the direction. The Q, you can squish the brush. So yeah, there you see it. And let's take something. Imagine we want to do something with our brushes. Then we have the, the brush properties in the brush editor. So you can find it if you right click and go to brush editor. I have a hotkey for it, F8. Here you see properties. You have shelf that's similar to, uh, to the K button. You have presets. If you want to take something, for example, uh, let's take a something that's already made here. Let's iron fillings, for example, and we go to properties. So here we can see the the preset, wh wh what it contains, and we can start to edit it and save it ourselves, like a version of it. So let's do that. Let's let's see what we can do here. So, for example, uh, noise. You can see here if I increase the noise, you can. There's a little test area down there, and decrease it. So let's do that. Increase the noise. It's gonna behave a little different. Let's take another brush. Maybe pepper. Increase the noise. Decrease the noise. Spacing. So the more spacing, the the whoa. I accidentally touched the exposure there. You see the spacing and uh, the few like the the more apart the it's gonna go a few and towards zero it's gonna be get more and more so this is what makes the how, how thick the paint will be applied essentially yeah you you gotta kind of have to mess around with this see what happens So there's a, a lot of things here, but let, let's make our own brush now. So I want to make a uh, like a, an arrow, so we can see directionality and what 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 it what, what it does to it. So in the bitmap here, you have bitmap and render. So in my case, I want to have the the bitmap, and I want to shows another one so on my desktop i have something called up arrow and it is a png with the transparencies i just painted an arrow so now here we see the default on this brush it rotates it and makes yes random arrows so if we want to for example uh, 
use this arrow and it's gonna follow my stroke we have something called um, where is it align to stroke so let's see what what happens let's take that and it doesn't really work because something is rotating this because I took a preset so uh, let's say jitter rotation I guess that's the first thing to to check out uh, but they are it's rotating the wrong way now for my example so line to stroke rotation I want to have it to 180 I think 180 degrees let's see yeah it follows but there's still something that kind of break it apart so let's see what that can be so I guess it will be jitter yeah jitter position so now that was jitter position is gonna randomize the position um, let's reduce it to zero so it's gonna be one line so for example if you would uh, make something like stitches or something that you would apply this technique fall over direction or, or line to stroke I mean so uh, increase the spacing you can see it down in here when it starts to there we go maybe yeah now we have a an arrow that follow my stroke so if you would have a pen uh, like a brush that had some kind of directionality you you might want to get it to a line first so that's a way to make a brush Another nifty thing is here, the steady stroke. That's something you have to enable on per brush. So let's take smoothing. And you, then you see you get so like a line traveling after and that's the, it's gonna try to smooth towards that line. And this is the, the delay of the smooth. So if you have a form that's hard to trace, can be good to have the smoothing on. And the longer, the longer the line, it's woo, becomes a little strange. There you see, and we have also distance. It's similar, I think distance is kind of what I usually use so rigid the rotation that's gonna be gonna start to rotate it so I encourage you to uh, go through all the brushes and see what what um, made them if you find uh, like uh, one of the, the uh, default ones that ships with Mari you can just go in here and take one and then go to properties and examine examine all the settings to see what what makes them tick and uh, also try to make your own when you're happy with something for example let's recreate just take that up arrow again just to switch it out uh, let's imagine that this is the the brush you wanna save. You can go to uh, shelves, and you can create a new shelf by hitting the plus and my brush. And uh, the plus sign there gonna add it to the, the shelf and you can double click and maybe give it a name so now we have it and 
where is it my brushes so now I have a new shelf that's my creative brushes and they have my arrow brush uh, so that that's a way to create brushes and edit brushes and save them so next I'm gonna just jump into ZBrush and make a sculpted brush and import it and I uh, can show you. Okay, so in ZBrush now, I want to make a, um, go to the document and make something that's square. And so, um, 1200 by 1200 and crop yes and let's take something light box let's take something a tool here thick plane for example so let's fill it I just want to sculpt something and extract the alpha out of this. So let's divide it. Geometry, maybe a few million polygons. Um, be them standard. It's a nice. Let's make some strange pattern here. Let's dent it in. Let's imagine that you wanna paint with this pattern in in Mori. So it's gonna be some kind of breakup pattern. There you have it. Then you can go to Alpha and uh, grab document and let's take the alpha so this one we export it and make it uh, i i have to import it in the photoshop and just make a, a png out of it but uh, let's make a tiff now see grab desktop in photoshop just quickly make a um, let's invert this first and uh, So I just want the values and with control and just click on the gray channel, I make a selection, make a new layer, fill with black and we can actually delete the underlying layer. So I want to get this one and save this as a PNG, a PNG. See, grab PNG. Let's now browse for that PNG there on the desktop. PNG and say bitmap. Let's, yeah, bit depth half. So there we have something that's. that's derived from that sculpt. So if we want to, let's make this like a radius. And spacing. Maybe take line to stroke. kind of alien pattern or something or whatever wrinkles or yeah so that that's the way you can sc sculpt or make an alpha in photoshop you 
can you I mean you could paint this but uh, uh, I think it's easier to to uh, visualize the if if it's a wrinkle or something you have to visualize the forms in ZBrush because you can sculpt them instead of imagine them in Photoshop for example but that's up to you um, so that that's the way you can make this kind of brushes using ZBrush as well and uh, yeah thanks for watching this episode from the Mari channel and if you want to see more of this kind of material just subscribe to my blog or my YouTube channel and uh, remember to hit the like button if you subscribe just click the bell notification and uh, you will be notified whenever I put something out bye